St. Malachi's prophecy and similarity to Fatima's third prophecy given by the Virgin Mary in 1917. St. Malachi's prophecy and the Fatima third message given by the Virgin Mary in her apparitions, which took place in 1917. Fatima was the location where the Virgin Mary appeared to three shepherd children, gave them prophecies concerning end times, and especially interesting is the third prophecy, which has been basically kept secret. The Fatima prophecy and the missing words of uh, the third prophecy and the denial of Joseph Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict XVI. The Pope Emeritus branded as pure inventions the latest speculation on the third secret. This is according to the Holy See, and we're reading this. Uh, this is a Vatican Insider article. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support, and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. I'll leave a link below for you. According to which the Holy See has not published everything in which the missing parts speak badly of the Council and of the liturgical reform. We know that in the early 60s, the Catholic Church was reformed. Many things have changed in the uh, liturgical life of the Church. Now, it's certain that the matter will not be dismissed. This is what Rassinger said at the time, a bad council and a bad mess. This would presumably be the truth, the true content of the third secret of Fatima, that the Vatican has allegedly kept secret, but Joseph Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, is the one who guarded it. He is the one who guarded the third secret. He published it and commented on it, branding it as pure invention and another alleged revelation on this most discussed and studied prophetic text. Now concerning the Pentagon scoop on this, the revelation appears to be a heavy one. The German theological father, Ingo Dollinger, who was a personal friend of Pope Benedict XVI, gave Mike Hickson on the site of 1 Peter 5 the announcement nothing short of sensational telling of a dialogue face to face with then Cardinal Rassinger, who was, of course, uh, he, I was, uh, he was uh, in charge of the doctrine of faith of the Catholic Church. Quote, not long after the publication of the Third Secret of Fatima in June of 2000 by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger told Father Dollinger during a face-to-face -face conversation that there is a part of the Third Secret that they have not yet published. Now, why is that? There is more than what we have published, said Joseph Rassinger, before he became Pope. He's also told Dollinger that the published part of the secret is authentic and that the unpublished part of the secret speaks of a bad council and a bad mess that would come in the future, in the near future. Well, we know that uh, obviously one of the bad things that happened, the weird things that happened, is that Pope Benedict uh, resigned went into seclusion and was taken over, the papacy was taken over by the elected Pope Francis, who is very globalist and liberal. And uh, from what we previously posted, there are a lot of bishops and cardinals that are massing together in order to remove him because he is going against the doctrine of the Christian faith. But that's another issue for another time. Going back to this, having to do with the third Fatima prophecy and the missing words, 
the new supposed revelation about the alleged unseen content. To date, the speculation about the alleged unpublished third secret of Fatima content, the missing words, has been divided between the more catastrophic announcement of terrible punishments by the Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and ideas more related to the internal life of the Catholic Church. So in essence, it's a questioning of the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council of the Catholic Church. Only the Catholic. We're not talking about the Christian Orthodox Church. Now, this latest release belongs to the second category. Pope Emeritus he says that, the, uh, he, uh, that he had, there is a denial, an unedited and brusque, arrived May 21st through a statement from the Vatican Press Office, which reports the quoted comment of Benedict XVI, quote, some articles published recently reported statements attributed to Professor Ingo Dollinger, to whom Cardinal Ratzinger, following the publication of the Third Secret of Fatima, which took place in June 2000, allegedly confided that the publication was not complete. With regard to this, the statement continues, Pope Emeritus Benedict the Sixteenth announces that he has never talked to Professor Dollinger about Fatima, clearly stating that the utterances attributed to Professor Dollinger on the issue, quote, are pure inventions, absolutely untrue, and confirms definitively the publication of the Third Secret Fatima is complete. The denial is therefore threefold. Ratzinger asserts the inaccuracy of the circumstances, the alleged dialogue with the German theologian of Fatima, of the content, that is, the negative words of the Virgin Mary on the Council, and the mass, the, the mess, that is, arising from the liturgical reform, the new mass, which is a mess, as well as the rumor of an undisclosed secret. The secret of Fatima, contained in the vision that three shepherd children received back in 1917. It's been over a hundred years since that prophecy has been given. The first two parts concerning the vision of hell, the second world war and the consecration of Russia were revealed early on, while the third part was destined only for the Pope. List Sister Lucia dos Santos wrote the third secret in January 1944 and she delivered it to the Bishop of Lieria Fatima, Bishop Jose Alves Correa da Silva in June of that year. Then the Bishop sent this to the Vatican at the request of the Holy See in the spring of 1957, towards the end of the pontificate of Pope Pius XII. It's always been said that it was to have been made public in 1960. But John the, 13th, the 23rd, as well as Pope Paul the uh, 6th, felt they could not do this. So it was John Paul II in May of 2000 who made the decision and proposed an interpretation of the vision. The martyrdom of a pope, quote, the bishop dressed in white, end quote, and of many Christians of which he would be the protagonist uh, while the attack, with the attack suffered in 1981. The then prefect of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, Joseph Ratzinger, endorsed the operation and wrote a commentary on the prophetic vision. It was presented as something belonging to the past. Also, the same Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict XVI, seems less inclined to consider the prophecy of Fatima entirely closed. He considered the martyrdom of Christians that certainly did not end with the fall of communism, but the attacks that the church continues to suffer from the inside by the sins of her own members, causing chaos and suffering to the church. Just one vision and what happens to the words? There are doubts that were raised after the publication of the 2000 text by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, uh, for which, of course, as we said, Pope Benedict, while he was uh, Joseph Ratzinger, was in charge of. They're based on two issues. The first is an unfinished phrase in the fourth memoir written by Sister Lucia. That's where she attributes to Our Lady in these words, quote, 
In Portugal, the dogma of the faith will always be preserved. It seems clear that from this context that these are words from the appearance relating to the vision of the third secret. The participation of the seer shepherds at the event of the apparitions was not equal for all three. Sister Lucia saw Our Lady and heard her voice and could talk to her. Jacinta Marto could see and hear but not speak, while Franco Marto could only see but heard nothing. Francisco, Lucia's cousin, was thus always able to see everything, including the vision of hell, but never heard any of the words spoken by the Virgin Mother, which were instead perceived by his sister and his cousin. This was confirmed by the same Sister Lucia on her fourth memory date in 1941. The appearance speaking of the third part of the secret would have addressed these words to Lucia and uh, Lucia and Jacinta. Quote, Francisco, yes, you can't tell him, end quote. From this particularly, some argue that the third secret contains only a vision, that of the martyrdom of Christians and the Pope, but also a set of words that accompanied and interpreted it and the interpretation of Lucia during the canonical process in 1924. That's where she declared on the subject of the third part of the secret, quote, the lady said to us a few short words urging us not to tell anyone except Francisco only, unquote. Francisco who had not heard anything. The lady said not uh, to us a few short words urging us not to tell anyone except Francisco only, end quote. Now, this is very strange because, you know, when prophecy is given, it's given for the benefit of the whole uh, of the Christian world because uh, all Christians make up the body of Christ. Christ, of course, as we know, gave his life for all Christians, for everyone who would want and come and believe in him. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand, For I, for one, do not understand why the Virgin Mother said in a few short words telling the two girls not to tell anyone except Francisco only. Maybe. I, I don't know. But it sounds strange to me. Now, the double envelope. The second problem concerning the history of the text of the secret is when it arrived at the Vatican, it was kept in a wooden box in the apartment of Pope Pius the Twelfth. It was also deposited at the former Holy Office, and in the dossier published by the Holy See in 2000 titled The Message of Fatima, it says that Pope John XXIII read the secret but decided not to publish it. So it said that Pope Paul VI asked for the text of the Holy Office, he read it, and on March, he read it on March 27, 1965, that was three years after the election. But the former secretary of Pope John, Loris Capovilla, stated uh, that uh, things that do not they do not coincide with his this reconstruction. Capovilla, who after the death of Pope Ron Cali had been working in the anteroom of his successor, said that Montini asked him on Thursday, June 27, 1963, just six days after becoming Pope and even before the solemn ceremony of coronation, which took place on the 29th, where this third secret was hidden because he could not find it. Capovilla said that the envelope containing the secret, quote, lies in the drawer of the desk called Barbarigo in the bedroom, end quote. There, the collaborators of Pope Paul VI recovered it. The inconsistency now between the Vatican publication and the words of Capovilla suggest that, in fact, there may be two texts. The first was kept in the apartment of the Pope, and the second was kept in the Holy Office archives. This would mean, according to an unproven hypothesis, that there are two different distinct parts of the third secret, which is itself only the third part of a single revelation. The text preserved in the archives would contain only the vision, the one revealed by the Vatican in the year 2000. However, the envelope that was in the papal apartment would preserve the explanation of that vision, the words of commentary spoken by Our Lady. The possible explanations. The people who believe in Fatima, the apparitions of Fatimas, the Fatimists say that uh, they are confident 
that the only possible explanation for these inconsistencies is that the two separate texts exist, the vision and the interpretation. The second text would not have been revealed because it's too catastrophic and apocalyptic, they say, or because it contains a negative view of the Council and of the Catholic Church's liturgical process, the liturgical reform. The latter situation causes the frenzy of those who attribute naively from the historical, the historical point of view and interestingly from the point of view of intra-ecclesial battles, the crisis of faiths, secularization, and almost all of the evils of the Church to Vatican II. Now, a lot has happened to the Catholic Church since Vatican II in the 1960s, especially with this uh, current Pope, Francis, who is ultra-liberal. They are convinced that if everything had remained crystallized as it was at that time of Pope Pius XII, there would be no secularization, no crisis of vocations or of the family, etc. But it remains to be explained why Pope John Paul II decided to publish only one part of the third prophecy instead of continuing to keep everything under lock and key. It can't be excluded, on the other hand, that the inconsistencies are due more simply not to the existence of two different texts, but of two different copies of the same secret stored in various locations. Another possible explanation has to do with many writings of Sister Lucia who continued to receive visions and messages, transferring them to the Vatican. It's possible that the popes had doubts and difficulties in distinguishing the authentic message of the apparition from the interpretations made by the seer. The words of Amato. Now, as stated by Pope Benedict XVI in the rebuttal that represents one of his rare appearances since he renounced the papacy, it was also stated a year ago that the Cardinal Prefect of the Congregation of Saints, Angelo Amato, who arrived at the Halo Factory, was second in command at the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. Quote, I must say that there is no fourth secret of Fatima, nor are there other hidden secrets. End quote. This is what he said in May of 2015. Quote, when I was secretary of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, I had the privilege, this is what he wrote, I had the privilege to have in hand and read the original manuscripts regarding the secrets of Fatima and their message. I have pondered them for a long time because they shed a light of faith and hope on the sad events of the last century and beyond. Let's recall that the 20th century, long predicted to be dominated by reason and brotherhood among the people, in reality was a tragic period for Christianity as it was persecuted and oppressed in many parts of the world. Without considering the two world wars, the most tragic stations of this evangelical way of the cross were sequentially the, American, the Armenian genocide, the Mexican repression, the Spanish persecution, the Nazi massacre, the communist extermination, and in the first part of the third millennium, the Islamist persecution. There are millions of victims and malignant ideologies which have generated, still generate, conflicts, hatreds, and divisions, he says. Now we have the St. Malachi prophecy concerning the last pope and God's judgment of the world. Now what do these have in common? Malachi's, St. Malachi's prophecy with the Fatima prophecy. After publication of predictions of the last pope and flow of interesting comments, there have been many articles written on the Malachi prophecy, the second coming, and the last judgment. According to most widespread interpretation of the prophecy, the last but one pope is Benedict XVI, Benedict 2005 2013, associated with the phrase Gloria Oliva, the glory of the olive. But his rule terminated in the evening of 28th of February, 2013. The last Pope is referred to as Petrus Romanus, Peter of Rome. 
Two closing par uh, paragraphs of the prophecy of St. Malachi say this, quote, In the times of the last persecutions by the Holy Roman Church, Petrus Romanus will mount the throne and gra graze sheep in the midst of a great deal of torments. Thereafter, the city of seven hills, meaning Rome, will be ruined, and the frightful judge will judge his people. The end. End quote. Now, many people may know that St. Malachi's words are closely interwoven with Virgin Mary's opposition, uh, apparitions in Fatima, or the third three secrets of Fatima. On the internet, of course, you can find various attempts to interpret all these and connect the two prophecies in order to determine of the approaching last times or end time judgment day. But the majority of all this still remains uh, a fantasy, of course, we don't know if a prophecy is fulfilled until after it has been fulfilled. Now, uh, everything depends on one's faith. But we'll continue our research referring to comments of various people. Now, these, uh, why the last Pope Francis here, Pope Francis, is considered to be Petrus Romanus, Peter of Rome. Quote, I shall explain for those who might misunderstand why Pope Francis, whose mundane name is Jorge Maria Bergoglio, has turned into Peter. When he was elected the Pope, he assumed the name Francis in order of St. Francis of Assisi. Now, if we move to Francis of Assisi, whose full name was Giovanni di Petrio, Pietro de Bernadone, when his father was away, mother named her son Giovanni, that is John, but the father came back from France and gave him his name Francis. His father's name was Pietro di Bernadone. We don't know whether we can associate Pope Francis with Peter by the name of Francis of Assisi, his fa of Assisi's father, although prophecies regarding other popes are also quite interesting. One example is the prophecy of John Paul I, it was indicated as De Medietate Lune, of the half moon. He was born on the 17th of October 1912 when the moon reached its half. Pope John Paul II is called De Labore Solis, from the labor of the sun, that is, of the eclipse of the sun, in the prophecy, because he was born on May 18th, 1920, on the day when a partial solar eclipse was observed in the Indian Ocean area and he was buried April 8th, 2005, when a rare hybrid total eclipse of the sun took place and was observed in the Pacific Ocean area. The prophecy of the last pope itself sounds as follows. This is what it says, quote, In the times of the last persecutions by the Holy Roman Church, Petrus Romanus will mount the throne and graze sheep in the midst of great deal of torments. Thereafter, the city of the seven hills will be ruined and the frightful judge will judge his people. The end, end quote. This prophecy may uh, be split into two parts. The first part tells about the last pope, meaning there won't be popes anymore, and the Holy See will collapse together with the pope, whereas the second part tells about the judge coming into the world. So that's very interesting. There is another prophecy of the Holy See, collapse and Pope's death, and if we compare the two prophecies, we also compare certain dates, pictures becoming even more interesting. Virgin Mary's appearance, her prophecy and symbolism of the 13th of October, quote, the prophecy mentioned in one of Fatima should be stated the prophecy was brought by neither a prophet nor a saint, it was a prophecy by the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, which she revealed to three children in the Portuguese city of Fatima. The Virgin Mary appeared to them six times on the 13th day of every month between 13th of May and 13th of October 1917 and revealed three secrets to them. The first two were published by Lucia, one of the three children who later became a nun in 1940s. The secrets referred to what had already happened that is, the end of the World War I, the beginning of World War II. When the bishop of 
Liera asked Lucia about the third secret in 1943. She said she was not sure God permitted her to tell that already. However, in October 1943, the bishop ordered Lucia to record the secret, and so she did. At that, she sealed the envelope and forbade uh, it to be opened until 1960. In 1960, the envelope was unsealed, and from hearsay, the Pope fainted after he read it. Though it's, uh, this is only a rumor, yet for some reason the Vatican did not publish a third secret until the year 2000, only because they associated with the attempt on the life of John Paul II in 1981 and the people's martyr destiny in the 20th century. That's how the interpretation of the secret went. But many people did not believe that there appeared rumors in the Vatican that had changed the text or concealed its part. In response to people's doubts, in 2001, the cardinal, the cardinal appeared to supposedly read the original prophecy enacted not on Vatican's behalf. What the Cardinal started telling could only be called ravings, having to do with flying saucers and evil aliens killing the Pope. Well, if uh, the sayings are true, if you don't believe, you can uh, take a story about saucers, maybe you'll believe this one. Now, let's compare St. Malachi's and Fatima prophecies because they both tell about the ruined city of Rome and the Pope, the Vatican, that is. According to Malachi, this is the last Pope, while in the Fatima prophecy, the Pope is walking around the ruined city and he gets uh, terminated. And bishops and priests are also terminated. What is described here? Well, the Holy See collapsed and the last Pope. There's only one difference in the two prophecies. St. Malachi says that, quote, the frightful judge will judge his people, unquote, whereas the Fatima prophecy mentions no judge for some reason. Where has he vanished? At the Vatican? Probably. In the papacy brain, most likely. It's a missing part of the prophecy which the Vatican has not revealed. It says, the advent of the judge or the Holy Spirit to the world in a human shape totally contradicts religious doctrine, while everything contradictory must not be known to flock, the Vatican's opinion is. So, the predicted event should have taken place not earlier than 1960, for which reason Lucia forbade opening the envelope before that year. There is another interesting thing, as to dates. The Virgin Mary appeared on the 13th day of every month between May and October. Uh, now, do we know which role is played in the number 13th in the life of the current Pope Francis and his service in the church. Well, he was ordained the 13th of December, 1969. He was elected Pope on March 13th, 2013. And uh, we don't even know what the exact date of the Holy See collapse and Pope Francis's death, but it could be happening on the 13th of, uh, let's say, October. Now, the 13th. The Pope, Pope Francis, has been locked into the number 13 for some reason. And the symbolism is that on 13th of October, 1307, the Knights Templar were arrested in France by King Philip's servants. The Templar order was obliterated by the Holy See. It was the order that especially revered, revered uh, the Virgin Mary and was eventually defamed, just like Mary Magdalene, Numerous sins were imputed to Templar Knights, adoration of uh, devils and idols, orgies, kidnapping, connections with Masons, etc. Now, will that be the exact day that, that when the Holy See will collapse? The Holy See throughout the history of which a count, countless number of innocent people lost their lives. Now, the text of the third, third secret of Fatima, concealed by the Vatican, the text of the third, third secret by the Vatican is this. This is what was released anyway. Quote, after two parts, which I've already explained, to the left and of a little above the mother of God, we saw an angel with a fiery sword in his left hand. The sword was ejecting tongues of flames that could burn the entire earth, but they diminished once touching the magnificent radiance emitted by the mother, mother of God, in the opposite direction from her right hand. Pointing at the earth, 
With his right hand, the angel shouted in a thunderous voice, Repent, repent, repent. And the endless bright light we saw there is God, something similar to people's reflections appearing in the mirror. When people passed before him, a bishop dressed in white who seemed looking like the Holy Father. There were also other bishops, priests, and believing men and women. They were ascending a steep mountain. On the top of there was a big cross made of uncouth trunks of cork corkwood. Before getting there, the Holy Father walked through the big city, a big city which was half ruined and half shuddering. He walked, stopping from time to time, suffering for pain and grief, and praying for the souls of those whose dead bodies he saw on the way. Having reached the mountaintop, he kneeled at the top of the cross and was killed by a group of soldiers who shot him with bullets and arrows. And the same way, one by one, other bishops, priests, believing men and women, as well as laymen of various titles and classes, died there. Two angels were standing on both sides of the cross, each having a crystal aspergium in his hand, in which they collected the bloods of the martyrs and sprinkled souls that, work, that worked their way to God. End quote. So, this is, of course, very interesting extremely interesting and uh, really prophetic in orderly human understanding. As we said again, we don't know if it's actually true prophecy until after the prophecies are fulfilled. This is the summary as follows. The three secrets of Hadima, or very Virgin Mary's apparitions of Hadima, have much in common with the prophecies of St. Malachi about the last pope. The Vatican has concealed the third secret of Hadima from the public, St. Malachi mentions the frightful judge who will judge the people. The Fatima prophecy also mentions the angel with a fiery sword in his hand and Virgin Mary. The Holy Catholic Church see will collapse. The last pope, Peter of Rome, is exactly the current Pope Francis. Possibly death of the last pope Francis will take place on October 13th. Here is unknown so far. To all appearances, October 13 is a special fatal, fatal uh, date, and certain retribution may be visited through it. The Italian capital city of Rome might be destroyed, and one of Michael Nostradamus' predictions say that the death of John Paul, John Paul II, only two months supreme pontiffs will rule, and then the doomsday will follow. Well, John Paul II, of course, has gone and other popes have come in his place. Two more supreme pontiffs. Uh, who are the two supreme pontiffs? First of all, uh, Pope Benedict, Cardinal Rassinger, that is, was only in his position for a, few, a very short time, and he resigned. Does he count or not? Well, we'll see when the prophecies and if the prophecies are fulfilled. I'll leave links below for you for this.